to me like you got something against that anvil the way you're beating it. Does it? Something wrong? Did I say anything was wrong? Some things don't need saying. Say it, whatever it is you're waiting to say. To me? You. Well, it's just I ain't ever seen you act this way before. What way? Well, the way you're acting. I don't know what you're talking about. Scott's grandpa. Now, I'm talking about the fellow that raised Scott for most of his life. That's who I'm talking about. You're not making any sense. Then how is it ever since you heard he was coming, you've been acting like a snake bitch? If there's not enough work around here, Jelly, to keep you busy besides pestering me, then maybe I can find something. All anybody ever needs to do around here to get his hair seen is just mention a certain rug given somebody's son, and which I ain't ever gonna do again. <laughs> Thanks, do you, uh, you go ahead. I'll be right along. Something I can do for you? Uh, no, thank you. I'm looking for somebody. Grandfather. Got it. How are you, sir? Sit down, boy. Sit down. I had mine at sunup. Oh, have a cup of coffee anyway. Sun up. I find that life starts a little earlier out here, sir, than Boston. And life must be a, a lot more rusty. <laughs> Those clothes. This town. I like it out here, sir. Yes. I assume that, since you've failed to acknowledge numerous invitations to return home. Well, I think it'll be a little time before I ever get back to Boston. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Any more coffee left? Johnny. Well, this must be Scotty's half-brother, Johnny Madrid. Well, it's not Madrid anymore, sir. It's Lancer. Uh, forgive me, of course. Scott's talked my ear off about you and Boston. Let's see now. Your mother was a foreigner, wasn't she? Mexican. Uh, yes, I understand she was a very lovely woman. I think we'd better be going, sir. Uh, yes, Scotty, but first I have a surprise for you. An old friend. Hello, Scott. Julie. Julie. <laughs> Seems to me. The young lady deserves a more substantial kind of welcome. I couldn't agree more, sir. <laughs> oh, Julie, I can't believe it, you. You never answered my letters. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Why? Not now, Scott, please. Not here. Now I know why Scott liked Boston. <laughs> well, come on, introduce me. Julie, I want you to meet my brother, Johnny. Julie Dennison. Julie, it's my pleasure. Well, the carriage is outside. Uh, oh, my hat. Where are your bags, sir? I'll buy the hat rack. I've got a lot to talk to you about on the way home. Ooh, is she pretty? They were engaged at one time, you know. Engaged? Yes, they were very much in love. I was always disappointed they never got married. But there's still time. Time and distance dim the hurt. <laughs> At least for some people.
Thanks, sir. From here, all the way to those mountains. Well, I've never seen it, but I seem to know it so well. This wilderness, where a naive young girl came to search for her sugar dreams. Well, they loved him, sir. That's why she came out here, to share her life with him. Hmm. I've often wondered what it is that drives a man so hard, makes him put ambition above all else, even his own family. Murdoch didn't have a family when he came here. Precisely. Murdoch had to force himself to make the trade. Trade? I raised you, Scotty, not Murdoch. I took care of you for 24 years while he was carving out his little empire. With all due respect, sir, I've tried to show my gratitude. Gratitude? Gratitude is something I don't want from you, my boy. Yes, I'm getting to be a silly, muddled old man. Let's get on. Let's not waste any more of each other's time, Harlan. What are you doing here? Well, that's not a very hospitable way of putting it. Well, I don't feel very hospitable at the moment. Well, surely we can have a friendly conversation. Why? Our last conversation wasn't on that basis. <laughs> well, perhaps you're right. But that was years ago. Any differences between us are finished. Done with. Are they? There's no, nothing to be gained by hostility, Murdoch. You have your two sons at your side. Splendid ranch, wealth, everything you want. Well, that takes care of me. Now, what about you? What do you want? Hmm. Dear precious Catherine, I don't remember this picture. One of the mementos you left behind in Carterville. She was the only thing of real value in my life. The only thing? What about Scott? Where does he register on that scale? Catherine was my daughter. And she was my wife. The mother of my son. Well, I did what I thought was best. It was my responsibility. To kill her? This is all, mister. Said he was her father and took everything else. Her belongings, everything. Did she suffer? Wasn't there. He wouldn't let me take care of her. He come back and paid me for my trouble, arranged for everything, then left with the boy. That's all I know, mister. It's all I know. Gonna be real showy when they get finished. Heard tell the old man paid a pretty penny to plant some grass and carve up a fine granite headstone. Still, if he'd cared that much, I think he'd stay for the burying. until I got there. What chance would she have had in that filthy little town? I wanted only what was best for Catherine. Do you call that the best? Leaving her to die in a wagon on a deserted road? That's uh, all in the past. Not to me it isn't. No, sir, it's right now. You kept my son away from me for 24 years. And what could you have done for Scotty? A down-the-heels dreamer with nothing. He was still my son. But I'm the one who raised him. I'm the one he belongs to. Ah. Now it makes sense why you're here. Really? Yes, you want to take Scott back to Boston with you, don't you? The girl, the memories, all very convincing arguments. Scotty has a legacy waiting for him in Boston. An estate of considerable worth. He has an estate right here. To be shared with his half-breed brother? No, Murdoch. There's no comparison between what each of us can give Scotty. He belongs in the world where he grew up, with the right people, 
or he can make something worthwhile of his life. You're forgetting one thing, Harlan. He's not a child anymore. He's a grown man with a will of his own. I believe he can be persuaded. Never. <laughs> I've no doubt, Murdoch, that you could sway Scotty by revealing your sordid version of the past. Unless, of course, you've already done so. I never thought I had to. Good. Then we can make a bargain. Whether Scotty returns to Boston or not must be solely his decision, without any outside influence. Not yours, not mine. Agreed, Mira? Agreed. Good. Anyone been looking for me? Oh, yes, uh, right over there, Mr. Garrett. Gentlemen. You Mr. Harlan Garrett? That's correct. I'm Carl Deegan. This here's Billy. We got here right on time like you wanted. Good. Now all you have to do is stay here at the hotel until I need you. Well, we was... We was kind of hoping to have a drink or two. Ah. I think this... I think this... That will cover your expenses. Uh, we was uh, promised 500. I just explained to you, that's for your expenses. You can get your 500 when you perform the required service. 500 don't seem like much after coming this far. The price was agreed upon. That's what it will be. Mr. Garrett. Wouldn't want you to think we were greedy or anything. But testifying against a man on a murder charge ain't something you do every day, you know. Well, perhaps that won't be necessary. However, should I need you, I'll get in touch. Good day, gentlemen. Hey, bartender. Drinks. See why she can't ride with one leg east and one leg west like the rest of us? Because Julie's a lady, that's why. It just isn't proper. Well, just because it belongs to you, I hope I never see you trying to be a lady in it. I'd as soon see you trying to ride a rocking horse. Would you just hurry up and finish? I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. He's waiting for you. You want me to look pretty, don't you? That's what's going to make it all work, isn't and it? If I didn't know how spineless you were, I'd say that sounded like defiance. What makes you so sure I can bring him back? Because I know what you have at stake. John. How do I look? Elegant. I gotta agree. Breathtaking. You are pretty. Do you think so, huh? Yeah. Any more cute remarks, my little brother? I'm gonna have to teach you some manners. Hmm. You don't want to get all wrinkled up, do you? No. There she is. Splendid day for right. Good morning, Julie. Indeed it is, sir. Indeed. 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 <laughs> I've got a lot of things to show you. You weren't going to, were you, Johnny? No, Teresa, she forgot to uh, iron my riding pants. <laughs> you try to forget 
like me out here in all this wilderness, Scott? Well, it takes more than an argument to end what we had. What do we have now? Scott, do you ever think about coming back to Boston? Yeah, I thought about it. Then why don't you? Because I've got a home here with Johnny and Murdoch. Well, what about your grandfather? <laughs> My grandfather's capable of taking care of himself. You know that. Is that the only obligation you think there is in Boston? What about me? Now, Julie, if we had gotten married... If? Is that the only word we can use? What about now? Scott, I love you. I want you to come back to Boston with me. Make your grandfather happy. Who makes me happy? I will. I promise. You've got to believe me. Julie, marry me. Marry me and live with me at Lancer. I can't. Why? Because my father's an old man. He's sick and he needs me. We could bring him out here. No use talking about it, Scott. You just don't understand. Or maybe you just don't care. But I do understand. Because I have the same feeling about my father. That's why I can't leave Lancer. He needs me, too. Does he? And why didn't he need you when you were growing up? Julie, what's that supposed to mean? I remember when we used to talk about it back in Boston. You hated your father then. You said he didn't care anything about you. Well, I was wrong. Because he does care. Still, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? All those years, he never even came to see you. Is Scott back yet, Murdoch? Say I blame him. Out there spending the whole day with a girl like Julie. In fact, I don't even know how you ever got him to leave Boston. You know, I, I know it was hard for you to locate me down in Mexico after all those years, you know, trying to locate one stray boy. Took time. Yeah. What I'm wondering about is, you know, where Scott was all the time. What took you so long? Sure, wouldn't it? The boy's only five years old. He's old enough to know his own father. But I'm his father, Murdoch. At least he accepts me as such. But that's beside the point. I assume you brought lawyers with you? I've come prepared to take Scott, if that's what you mean. Are you prepared? As prepared as I am? Have your lawyers told you how many years it will take to fight my legal guardianship? Scotty, endlessly dragged into court as a key witness. 
Take a good look at your son, Murdoch. This is the happiest time of his life. His child. He's with his friends. Secure in his home. The only home he's ever known. Now, what can you give him to replace all this? Years of court battles. And then if you're lucky, a desperate strip of sand and rock to play on instead of grass. A mud hut to live in instead of a comfortable home. Is that what you want for your son? Think of your mind, Murdoch. Do you want Scotty torn apart? Oh, Scotty, what is it? We're ready to cut the cake, Grandfather. Good. I'll be right out. Oh, Scotty. I want you to meet a friend of mine. His name's Murdoch. How do you do, sir? Hello, Scott. Glad to meet you. You may call that decision my one moment of weakness. Now it's your decision. If you truly love the boy, I know what you'll do. What'd you say? Say? About what? About Scott and Boston. Oh, that was nothing. That, uh... What about me? Like I said, it was nothing. Have a pleasant ride? Most of it. Murdoch, I think you and I are overdue for a little talk. I think I'll go find, uh... Teresa. <laughs> There's, uh... Something I've been wanting to ask you. Well, I'll go on and ask it. It's, it's the past. I guess it doesn't die that easy. Well, if you let it. No reason to dredge up the past. What we got is here and now. That has to be all that counts. You understand that, don't you, son? Yes, I understand that. That means don't ask questions. Especially why you never came to Boston to claim me. I wanted to take you with me. There just wasn't any way. But you're my father. Nobody knows that any better than I do. And I'm grateful. Grateful for what? Because you let somebody else raise your son? Listen, Scott. All I ask is one thing. If you've got any decisions to make, don't make them out of anger. you of what your function would be, you assured me that under the circumstances there would be no qualms. It was before I realized quite how ugly it would be. Ugly? I, uh, I suppose I should have accounted for that reaction. Did I ever tell you, my dear, that I've lived my life as a master accountant? Accounting for every dollar, every reaction, every emotion. And then one day, I came to realize that those 60 careful, scrupulous years had brought me nothing but money 
power, position. <laughs> it's inconceivable to you, isn't it, that those cherished goals should come to near nothing. That a lonely, hollow old man could hunger for something more. You'll never get him back. Never. Julie, never underestimate an accountant. <laughs> No, you, Scott, I can't go through with it. Go through with what? This make-believe game that I'm supposed to play. The romantic decoy. Your grandfather forced me to come here. It was a trick to get you to come back to Boston. Go on. Sounds interesting. There was nothing else for me to do. He said that he'd bankrupt my father's company if I didn't cooperate. My father is a sick old man. I don't want to see him destroyed. What would you have done, Scott? I don't know. But at least I'm grateful to know the truth. That was an unfortunate mistake, Julie. Very unfortunate. I had counted on your discretion. No, Grandfather. I think the mistake was all yours. I think not, boy. You will return with me to Boston. If not for Julie, for other more convincing reasons. A number of years ago, when you were a child, your father presented something of a threat to me. As a cautious man, I took steps to protect myself. I had the Pinkerton agency investigate him. Gentlemen. This is Carl and Billy Dagan. The Pinkertons were fortunate enough to pick them up again after all these years. They have something to tell you, Scotty, about your father. Scott? Someone want to wake up Johnny, he might as well hear this too. Since we're all here together. Johnny? Yeah, wake up. It's your move. Well, go on. I've... Uh, I've decided to go back to Boston with my grandfather. Surprise to me, too. I must say, a very pleasant surprise. Excuse me. So, just like that, huh? You suddenly decide you're going back to Boston. That's right. What's the matter, big brother? You get a little sand in your boots? And you got to run home? Johnny. I want to know why, Murdoch. That's all. I'm just not cut up for this kind of life. That's all. Oh. Anyway, you got along all right without me before. You do just fine from now on. I'm sure Scotty feels a deep regret. But after all, he did live 24 years of his life in Boston. 
Scott. Scott. We don't want you to go. I know. There's no reason why you can't come to Boston, visit me. Well, Boston's a long ways off, even if we was invited. You planning on taking the afternoon stage? Well, grandfather left a few things at the hotel. We'll go there first and then cut south and pick up the train. Good idea. Save a lot of rough travel. Yeah. Son. Take care of yourself. Yeah. If you ever feel it, you... Scotty, we'd better be on our way. Bye, Scott. I didn't see anything so all fired fancy about Boston, even when I was there. Seems to me, Murdoch, you could have tried a little harder. You could have put up a fight. He's a man, Johnny. He's not a little boy. It's his decision. Well, that may be good enough for you, but it's not for me. Nope. Mr. Garrett didn't leave any belongings here. All he did was come by to have a talk with the Deegans. Deegans? Two brothers. They must work for Mr. Garrett or something. He come in three days ago, left $100 for their keep. <laughs> They've been living top of the hog ever since. Deegans? They from around here? i never seen them before. Hey, you want to talk to them? There they are, down the end of the bar. They've been bellied up most every day since they got here, drinking on Mr. Garrett's money. Hmm. Thank you, I think I will talk to him. Howdy. Buy a drink? <laughs> you hear that, Carol? Man wants to buy us a drink like we're dirt poor or something. <laughs> you keep your hands out of your pockets, friend. We're buying the drinks here. Hey, barkeep, slide us another glass. This is very nice here. Much obliged. You can thank Mr. Harlan Garrett of Boston. Well, why don't I make a toast to Mr. Harlan Garrett? From Boston. He's been mighty good to us. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, he must be a real friend of yours. Wouldn't exactly call him a friend. But he sure got lots of money. Oh, boy. If I only had a friend like Mr. Garrett, huh? Hard pickings to find that kind of luck. A little more than luck, I'd say. Don't forget. Murdoch Lancer helped out a little bit, too. Lancer? Shut up, Billy. Hey, come on now. Don't worry about me. I'm just making a little conversation, that's all. Sounds more like you're asking questions and looking for answers. Who are you, mister? Johnny... Lancer. And you ain't got nothing more to say to you. We're minding our own business. Your business seems to include a lot of interest about Murdoch Lancer. I just want to know why. Don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. We are peaceful citizens, mister. We ain't done nothing wrong. 
All right. But if I find out different, I'm going to come back and talk to you again. How much you didn't? Ain't nothing he can do anyhow. It's our Paul got murdered. Law's on our side. If and we was going to the law. Remember when Mr. Garrett paid us off? Yeah. Can't you look at his wallet? Fat as a stuffed toad. He's heading for the train junction, as I recall. Right on our way. That's right, Deegan. Two brothers, Carl and Billy Deegan. A little older than me. Dirt scratchers. They know you, Murdoch, and they know Garrett, because Garrett is paying them all. Deegan. I know him, Johnny. I know him. It happened a long time ago, Johnny. She had received word that Scott's mother was very seriously ill. I'd been riding steady for about two days. It was about 10 miles outside of Carterville. I was cutting through the Badlands. And I had to ride through a narrow canyon. That's when he started gunning me. Go on, get back, get back. wanted to disarm the man. But he forced me to kill him. But he wasn't alone like I first thought. The man had a family. Two boys, maybe a wife. I wasn't sure. I could feel them watching me, but I couldn't see them. His name was Deegan. His motive must have been robbery. Nothing else made any sense. I went back to the canyon as soon as I could. The wagon was gone. The only thing they left behind was the grave. What about the law? Went to Sacramento, made my statement to the federal marshal. I was clear, and I thought that was the end of it. I guess other people had different ideas. Oh, Murdoch. It's been a lot easier sharing it with someone. There are some things in this world a man tries to forget, Johnny. Killing a man's money. So old Garrett found out and used it as an axe over Scott's head, huh? It's my guess. Scott went along with it because he thought he was protecting me from a murder charge. Johnny, let's go meet a train.
can't we at least talk, Scotty? It's going to be a long trip. I think we've said just about everything that has to be said. Is it possible that we could lose so easily what we had for so many years? We didn't lose it. You threw it away. Well, nice time. Plenty of time for mending. You'll see, Scotty. Once we get back to Boston, we'll be right. Scotty! Got the other one! The old man's getting weak! Come on! Soon, Scott's still alive. If that thing is loaded, I could use some help. If you'd let them, your troubles would have been over. Why didn't you, Murdoch? I've got no troubles, Harlan. 
Not anymore. become winners, the winners lose us. I can think of no reason to look at it that way, Harlan. When you get to be my age, there's only one way to look at it. I won't offer an apology for what I wanted to do, only for how I tried to do it, that I'm sorry. Perhaps if we could have brought ourselves to this 25 years ago, Grandfather, we better hurry if we're going to catch that stage in town. Ah, uh, well, goodbye, Murdoch. Goodbye, Harlan. I'll get those for you, sir. You still remember your good manners. I'll, uh, I'll try to get back to Boston sometime. Yes, Scotty. You do that, sometime. Oh, I'd as soon see a hard drought come visiting as him. Even a hard drop can do some good, Jelly. How's that? Makes us appreciate what we sometimes take for granted. <laughs> 